Hi, I'm Todd with Red Hand Studios, and I've been commissioned to work on a prop piece that is a foam double bit logger's axe. Uh, it's going to be used for a photo shoot at a local event, and we want to make sure that people weren't hurting each other. So today, I'm going to go through a quick tutorial on how to make this. first thing you need to do is find your PVC pipe and measure it out. This is going to be a 36 inch shaft. Mark that with a sharpie. And then take it to your cutting object of choice. That could be a hacksaw, PVC cutters. I'm using a, a chop saw here really quick because it's fast and it's already done. Yet. Then we're going to take an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper and fold it in half to make the pattern for our double bladed axe. Here I am marking out roughly where the center point is going to be and then measuring out so that both sides are symmetrical. And then afterwards you can use an exacto knife to cut this pattern out or a pair of scissors even and then unfold it. It's kind of a oversimplified way of making the little paper snowflakes that you used to do in elementary school. And yes, that is a G.I. Joe tattoo on my right forearm. Here I am using the heat gun to melt and form the plastic at the end where the handle is going to go into the double-bitted axe blade. And then after I get it to a moldable temperature, I kind of whack it with a sledgehammer to start the flattening process. And then I'm using a clamp to finish off and hold the ovalized process while it cools back down and holds its shape. Here we are taking that pattern that we cut out and placing it on an EVA floor mat. You can pick these up at Harbor Freight. I think it's out of a four pack for six dollars. It's uh, about a half inch thick. It's got traction on one side and it's smooth on the other. And I'm pinning this in place with little um, sewing pins so that doesn't slip around while I trace it. That way I keep a nice, good, solid line. I uh, use a fairly decent Sharpie so that you can control that ink line. And then tracing the other side. pins and take the pattern off and set it aside for later because you're going to probably want that back. And now we're going to take a razor blade. This is a DeWalt utility knife. It's a snap-off blade, but I haven't had to snap it off in a year. Um, I continue to resharpen it because foam will dull your knife really quick. And draw the knife through the foam. Try to keep it at a 90 degree angle for now, uh, perpendicular to the foam, so you can get a nice straight clean cut. And if the blade starts to drag or get jagged edges through the foam, it's time to resharpen it again. I find it's easier for me to work with smaller pieces of foam. And here I am pinning the blade that we just cut out on top of another piece of foam to cut out the second half of our double bit axe blade. I'm going to do the same process with tracing it with a sharpie. Unpin it and go after it with that giant razor blade again. Make sure to put your pins back in the little sewing tomato, otherwise your cat will steal those pins and eat them, resulting in a very large vet bill. And again, it's I just for a work. second, I'm going to stop 
and talk about this. This is a respirator. There are different kinds of respirators. This one takes little canister filters. You really need to be using one of these whenever you're sanding things that are caustic, like foam, uh, particle board, plywood, wouldn't be a bad idea. Sawdust is not great to get into your lungs. Um, spray painting, um, anything that could cause you to have respiratory issues, you really should have a respirator mask. You can use a dust mask for some things, but especially with this EVA foam, I really, really recommend going ahead and spending the money. They're usually under $20 uh, with some good canisters. They slip right over your head, even when you're wearing a stupid hat. And allow you to not die. Here I am using a rotary tool with a sanding bit to sand out the center section of both pieces of the axe blade so that there's a place for the handle to fit. Don't eat this dust. I'm test fitting right now to make sure that I've got um, a proper fit for the blades that are going over the handle. And it needs just a little bit more work, but that's okay. Now this texture is a problem. The glue that we're going to use isn't going to want to adhere very well. So we're going to use the Dremel to kind of rough that area up and take off a lot of the texture from the floor mat. You could use sandpaper or a sanding block here if that's what you have. It's just going to take a really long time. Now this is barge contact cement and I've got it in a mason jar with a brush glued into the lid. Uh, this is way cheaper than buying a zinc paint pot, so I just built this myself. Um, it allows me to keep my glue safe and from drying out and keeps the mess to a bare minimum. Now the way contact adhesive works is you put it on both pieces that are going to be glued together. You let it get a little bit tacky, uh, it takes about eight minutes or so on foam. Uh, put another layer on it sometimes, and then you stick the two pieces together. Uh, in order to get good adhesion, uh, you can't be gluing it to super slick plastic, so I'm sanding down the plastic a little bit here, so that it'll be grippy for the glue. I'm brushing the dust off of the PVC, and now applying the contact cement. And then I'm going to set this piece of pipe aside and let that set and start putting the glue onto those foam pieces. Again, I'm going to glue both of the uh, traction sides that I sanded down. Let it get a little bit tacky and then we'll be putting them together. With contact cement, a little bit of glue does go a long way, so try and spread out a thin layer. You don't want a big gloopy mess here. You want it to kind of dry evenly and get tacky at the same time. And here we are pressure fitting the handle into one half of the blade form. And then I'll put the other half of the blade form over the handle and then kind of roll the pieces together. Sorry, it went out of frame there. I want the edges to line up as best as I can so I have less cleanup to do later with the razor pen and the rotary tool. And just press those pieces together and let them sit for a few moments to, to make sure that they're tacked together. And there's the basic shape. You can see that there's some seam work to do, that these pieces don't line up 100% perfect, and that's okay.
And here I am using the razor knife again to trim up the edges so that they're a little bit smoother. Taking care of the big work with the knife. You can hear that little squeak there. That means the blade's starting to get dull. And now we're going to take the rotary tool and grind those edges down a little bit. Make them smoothed out. And again, the better your seams are when you're gluing this together, the less of this cleanup work you're going to have to do. Uh, to be honest, I was a little bit rushed and tired this evening. And now we're going to take the edges of the double axe bit and start grinding those at a little bit of an angle. Uh, to about an inch in on each side, which will give us the look of an actual sharpened axe blade when we paint it. And the way that metal was sharpened back in the day, it's okay to have a couple of nicks and gouges in the blade edge because it's going to look weathered, it's going to look used. flip the axe over and do the other side and every once in a while check and make sure that your angles aren't uh, two completely different angles that you're grinding here like if, if uh, you round one edge over too much you need to go back now and here I am applying just a watered down black acrylic paint um, which is going to soak into the floor mats you might need to do two or three coats and then um, a red acrylic paint being brushed on and it's important to keep your brush strokes going in one general direction so you'll see me smearing the paint around the edges here and then dragging it all across kind of at a diagonal and that's just to keep the brush strokes going in one direction it looks a lot better than a smeared mess Now we're going to take a silver acrylic paint, this is a bright silver, and dab off onto a paper towel and do some dry brushing. That's where you lightly drag a brush with very little paint across the texture of the object that you're painting. And this leaves the silver highlights on there with a little bit of the black in the bottom showing through, um, which adds some depth and texture and, and lets the light reflect out better. And then I've masked off the blade here, and I'm using a white primer over the uh, PVC pipe. Um, and now I'm using an airbrush that I've got, an uh, automotive paint detail gun, to spray on some brown paint to the shaft over the top of those white spray paint streaks, which will give it a little bit more of a wooden uh, texture to it. This is just acrylic paint mixed with a 50% rubbing alcohol solution that goes to the air gun that seems to work out pretty well. And then when I'm done, I'll give the whole thing a clear coat to protect it. And here's the finished ax. This is gonna be really neat at the photo booth at the event that it's to be used for, or a horror movie, or a birthday party.